In this tutorial, you will learn how to create a 3D site model in Revit 2024 using Coco Solid and Autodesk Format. In the first homework and part one of the Revit introduction tutorial, we use a CAD file with contour lines to create our topo solid. But for the next homework, we're going to use a tool called Autodesk Forma, which was previously called Space Maker. This tool will allow us to generate the topo solid of your project site that we can use as a base for your Oakwood community project. This will save you a few steps in creating your 3D site model in Revit. The first thing you will need to do is to log in to your Autodesk account. On the side panel menu, select all products and services, scroll down to Forma, and then hit access. This will take you to the Forma dashboard. Click new project, type in the project site. For us, it will be the existing Oakwood Recreation Center, so 767 California Avenue, Venice, California. You can adjust the map area, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to confirm um, the area for now. Also notice that in the information panel, indicating that the base of the area you selected, we will order a terrain model, which is the terrain data by USGS. This is based on a lighter scans of the uh, surface. Let's click confirm. Now we have additional information we can add to our site selection. As you can see, terrain is already included, so let's add roads with the OpenStreetMap and also open city model, which are building models from OpenStreetMap. And if you want parcel data set, you will need to have a subscription, which is not available if you're using an educational license. So let's add the OpenStreetMap. Same with the buildings. Now let's close the order data window. On the left panel, you can see our selected site. You can rename the proposal one. If you right click, rename. Let's pick an appropriate name, which is uh, Oakwood Community Site. On the left panel, you can see there are different icons. Let's click on the library. And now we can see the layer information added to our site, terrain, roads, and buildings. There are other features you can use uh, in the Autodesk Forma. Feel free to explore on your own. But for this tutorial, I'm only interested in generating the existing site to use as a base for our site model in Revit. Let's go back to the navigator. And let's again right click on our site, select Revit. If this is your first time in Autodesk Forma, you will need to download the Revit add-in, install. So go ahead and do that first. After you install, go back to Forma, and this time select Send to Revit. Now let's go to Revit. This time let's create a new file, but select Browse, select Default as our template, uh, click Project, and then click OK. So if you install the Autodesk Forma add-in, when we click to the Massing and Side tab, you will see a Forma command added to the ribbon. Let's select the Load Proposal. And it's going to give us a dialog box. And you can see the site we created, which is the Oakwood community site. Let's click the option, make sure that we have everything selected except merge walls. Then click OK, and then click load. Now let's switch to a 3D view. Let's change the graphic to shaded. 
And let's zoom in so we can see our site. So you can see that with the context building is also the existing recreation center. First thing we need to do is to demo the existing building on site. Let's click the building contacts, which are all in a model group. Also notice that the group is pinned. So let's unpin that. Now let's go click edit group. Select the existing recreation center and then hit delete. Click finish and then let's pin back the context building. Since we added the road data from the OpenStreetMap in Autodesk Forma, it also generated the road as a subdivision in the Topo Solid. So let's select one of the roads on the Properties palette, click the Material Selection. This will give us a dialog box to specify a material that we want the road to have. So let's type in asphalt click ok now in the top of solid you can see the changes in the material let's select the road again and let's do further adjustments let's change the height of the road right now as a default one feet uh, is the height of the roads but that is going to be too high so let's do for now a one inch adjustment. Unfortunately, you can only input positive values in the height of the subdivision. So we can't do any negative input. Also, let's go ahead and uncheck the inherit contours to remove the contours on the road subdivisions. So go ahead and modify the other roads in the topo solid on your own. Now let's go to the site view. Notice that we don't see the site model in our view. So if you click the survey point here, the triangle, it is located at zero, zero, which is a known benchmark when they were doing their uh, LIDAR uh, survey. Now let's click the uh, project base point. You might need to use a tab to cycle through the elements in order to select the project base point. And then once you cycle uh, to the circle symbol, click that. Now you can see how far our site is in, in comparison to the survey point. But if you start to zoom in and then keep zooming in, you will eventually see our site. So what can we do about that? The easiest way is to hide the survey point. So type VG for visibility graphics, type S, select the site category, expand the category, then uncheck survey point, then click apply, and then hit okay. Now, when you double click the scroll wheel on your mouse, it will automatically zoom to fit to our site. In Revit, there are two Norts, through Norts and Project Nort. Through Nort is the actual Nort in the real world, while Project Nort is the project orientation in respect to the way you want the plans to be viewed. Since sheets in Revit are typically in landscape orientation, your project should be oriented to whatever the longest of the axis of the project. So in our case, the northeast should be the project north. It is also best and more convenient to work on project north in comparison to true north. To do that, what we need to do is go to Manage tab. In the Position dropdown, let's select the Rotate Project North. We will do this in two steps. Because our site is in an angle, the first thing we need to do is to align a selected line. It will give us a few warnings. Let's click OK for now. 
And this will orient the site where the north is, is the project east. Then we will repeat the same process. Manage, position, rotate project north. This time, let's do a 90 degree counterclockwise. It will give us the same warning. Click OK. And now the project north is oriented where the north east is. When you go to your properties, you can now toggle back and forth between true north and project north. Typically, plans should be oriented to project north, in exception of a site plan. Site plans should be oriented as true norths. Make sure in your drawing sheets to add north arrow to indicate the true north of the project in the real world. Now let's crop our site. It's always better to have more context on your site as you start, but for our project, we will need to adjust and crop our site. There are different ways we can achieve that. First is using a scope box. This option is good because it is not destructive. We can always go back to the full site when we remove the scope box. Second is to actually crop the site. To do that, we're going to use the split tool in the modify tab. Make sure that the site is unpinned. Select the split tool. Click anywhere. And it's going to give us an option to use to draw the boundary for the split. I'm going to use the rectangle. It will give us an error message. The benefit of this option is to optimize your model file. Because of the size of our topo solid, it will burden the processing of your computer when modifying the topography of your site. Typically, in a project this size, you will need to link the Revit model as a separate model from the building model so that we can minimize the size of the project file. Another good thing about loading the site from Autodesk Forma is the satellite map. This data is included in the import process from Forma to Revit. So if you change the graphic style to realistic, that will show the satellite image of the site. This is handy when you need to adjust the site, for example, adding sidewalks. You can use the aerial map as a reference guide. So now let's talk about adjusting the top of solid to match your design. Part of the Architecture 500 last semester is the site design of your project. Um, to adjust the site, you can use the shape editing tools. Click the top of solid and then click the modified sub elements to get all the control points. This is similar to Rhino, where you can click the points and define the height of the points. This will modify the topography. As you can see in the changes in the points, also modify the contour lines in the topo solid. You can also add points. Same thing, you can adjust the height of each of the points. You can do split lines. However, this option will create a defined line in the topo solid, which you will need to turn off in the visibility graphics of your drafting views. Now let's go over the site excavation of a topo solid. We already talked about how to use void forms to create building pads. So again, go to the architecture tab, component, model in place, select site, create your geometry. Sometimes I like to draw uh, as a solid form first, then change the solid to void, and then cut the topography. You can also use model elements to cut the topo solid. For example, after we create your foundation wall, 
you can use the foundation wall and its footing to create uh, excavation of the site. First thing we will need to do is go to Modify, select Cut Tool in the Geometry, select the Topo Solid as the model we want to cut, and then make sure to check Multiple Cut, then select the foundations and the slab elements in your model. And that will create an excavation using your foundation. And that's the end of this tutorial. For the next video, we will go ahead and continue to modify our topo solid using different tools and techniques so that you can modify the topo solid to conform to your site design.